in particular aquaponics. And uh, we're going to recap on that just from our, our lesson last week. And we, we established that there was going to be 2 billion people extra by the year 2050. And that some of the complications for researchers are how we're going to feed these people in particular because the resources are limited. One of those, of course, is water, which we're all aware of in this room, being in the water industry. But uh, also the food or biosecurities of food, how are we going to, how are we going to uh, develop those. So one of those techniques was aquaponics. And we also established that last week that it was a combination of aquaculture and hydroponics. And that it was a synergistic relationship between these two industries that we could combine and using the same common infrastructure. So rather than having individual industries, we could combine them as one separate or one whole industry. And it's such that we're looking at creating a whole commercial development in the future of integrated sciences, in particular aquaponics for food production, and then valuating the waste from those productions further to other integrated sciences, which we're going to cover as well. So we also looked at how uh, fish and plants here are uh, combined together. And then our management is what combines those two industries together. And in the middle, we've got here precision integrated farming systems. We're using precise techniques and methodologies to combine those industries. And then uh, in, in, in the middle here, increase that production, which we call precision integrated farming systems. We also looked at uh, uh, some other aspects of uh, aquaponics as far as the benefits. We're just going to go around, just quickly around the room, some of the different things, if we remember, some of the things we talked about, some of the benefits. Perhaps a couple from this uh, side, if we've got some. Small footprint. Small footprint, mm -hmm. excellent. Yeah, use the whole, everything in the system. Yep, yep. The waste no, of one no system waste. becomes fertiliser for the next. Yes, the waste, yeah. Uh, low wool use. Yes. Anymore. Quite a number. So we've got fertilizer not required, herbicides not required, pesticides not required, some of those other ones. So no chemicals, that's the main thing we need to look at. And also uh, water is minimised, we heard that from over here, as well as the footprint. It can also be so in poor soil regions or even on rooftops, we discussed that last week as well. And then also we look at some of the other benefits of being no soil borne disease as far as coliforms or E. coli. And E. coli is particularly uh, prevalent in uh, terrestrial animals, etc., it can be transferred to humans. But in our case, because we're using water, there's no E. coli in water. There are coliforms, but not E. coli. Also, uh, high fish densities on our plant growth. So the more fish that we have, the more waste, the more nutrients that are produced, the more plants that we can have. We also looked at controlled environments, how they allow year-round production. And also, because using these greenhouses, we're able to produce CO2 from the fish respiration. And from that fish respiration, CO2, we can then feed that into the plant system as part of the photosynthesis. So we've got this exact, uh, exacerbated effect on the plant, so we can actually have more productivity. So that was last week what we looked at, and this week we're going to look at how to effectively evaluate an aquaponic facility and its produce based on current research in South Australia. So this is our research facility at Omega Fish Products, and we're going to look at the effective evaluation of what are some of the components in it, and what are some of the production methods used, but what's the produce, uh, the produce that we get out of it, and how, do we, how can we evaluate that as far as uh, judging it against other produce in the marketplace. Our objectives will be to understand the mechanical principles of the operation in the research station, the biological components of the uh, research station of integrated farming using aquaponics, and also the evaluation. So we've got a bit of a little bit of a um, activity later on as well. Let's have a look at comparisons of water use for food. Ricosi, uh, Jim Ricosi was uh, one of the, I suppose, the forefathers of aquaponics for the last 28 years, and uh, they came up with a uh, Ricosi et al. and his his organisation came up with some comparisons of water use, now converted this to Australian dollars from US dollars, but they've worked out that to grow $100 worth of Australian produce of rice takes 470,000 litres of water. For cotton, 160,000 litres, milk, 147,000 litres, 123,000 for sugar, vegan fruit, 37,000, and hydroponics is 600. Now we're going to be looking at some of those efficiencies of hydroponics. So we've got these comparisons here, but it's not to say that for $100 <laughs> worth of beef that the cow has to drink 81,000 litres of water. It's the amount of water that lands as the watershed, or the water footprint that lands mm. on that pasture, which the cow then converts the grasses into foods. Mm. Mm. So that's Leaders, what we're looking at. Does that leverage include, through the production life cycle of um, you know, processing and all those types of additional... Not so much the processing, just to, to create that... So it's purely just... <coughs> the raw ingredient, the raw produce. So there's the additional footprint... <coughs> on top of that, of, of, yeah, I mean, the processing can, water usage... Yeah, we can include the clothing, you know, the amount of water it takes to make the cotton grow, the, you know, for the clothing, so we can go through all that, but it's the footprint um, is specifically for food. Pretty amazing you see the 470,000 litres of water for $100 cotton. out for the rice. Mm. And, yeah, for, and, for and the then price. also the cotton one as well. It adds weight to the argument of why the hell do we grow it in this country. Mm. 
So now it's somewhere where it's going to be less impact. Less impact. So if we go on the <coughs> On the Australian Bureau of Statistics water account, they've actually found that the average South Australian uses 388 litres of water a day. That's not to say that we each use that much, but some will use more, some will use less. But the average is 388 litres. To produce food for these people, for a daily basis, for one person, we're looking at that footprint that we discussed before, 5,000 litres for a meat eater, $2,500 mm. for a vegan or vegetarian, and simply because we're taking the meat component out. Mm. So we're using more, more of the rices and grains, etc. For uh, comparisons for general water use for Australian aquaponics in the tropics and subtropics, so we've compared it to the subtropics in, in our country, to the tropics of, say, Virgin Islands and the Caribbean, and we found that to grow fish and lettuce is, oh, sorry, to grow fish and lettuce is 500 litres, and for fish and basil is 173 litres. So if we compare that to just hydroponics alone, which is 600 litres, you can find that the efficiencies here mm. are just fantastic. So is that, Andrew, is that the same? quantity of basil as you've got lettuce? So it just seems so, so different. It would depend on, on the $100 is because the mm. price of basil is far more ah, than the true. price of lettuce. Yes. Ah, value so mm. from a precision integrated farming system, food daily use that we looked at before, our own research farm has, oops, our own research farm has used 630 litres of water per day to produce, in this case, not as an individual but as a family of four that we've got here, 630 litres to produce two kilos of fish per day and mixed veg for the family. So it's less than 175 litres. But additionally, there's also the extra value of produce that's being made that's not being eaten by the family. For example, we had a thousand lettuces out there, we're only eating what we can consume, but the growth in there as well is that extra, extra cost that's being produced. So it's very efficient, we're not including that, we're just talking about daily food use, 630 litres for a family of four. How much do you remember? Just turn to the person next to you and discuss some of those over a minute. Just discuss some of those values that we talked about as far as cotton, rice, etc., in comparison to what we're talking about in the grain farming and what could be the benefits for a future industry. I'll give you a minute. Well, <laughs> key thing is 600 litres is the, yeah. the hydroponics or aquaponics, I think. Yeah. And the, yeah, anything else is just so way out of yeah. the scale. Of the and so if you look at irrigation processes and that traditional pivot farming and things of that nature, how much water must go into that? It's uh, this little ecosystem, or when I say little, so it's an ecosystem that sort of can expand out and so much more efficiency for the amount of water you put in. I reckon he's uh, missed huge amounts of water that go into Western irrigation system, like what's lost in the channels, yeah. what's lost in the fixed storages, like yeah. the cubby and that. Yeah. Okay, so folks, thanks very much. Yeah. So can we see how the efficiencies of integrating sciences or integrating industries can actually increase the productivity of industries that normally use quite a amount of water, in particular the, the traditional way of growing, say, in uh, large flood irrigated areas? for rice, cotton, etc., compared to combining it and reticulating water. So the efficiencies are very good. And the only thing we've got to work out now is the efficiencies of how to make the produce better itself. So as genetic engineers, we might say, well, you know, this might be a better way. Combine the two together and we can have veggie fish. <laughs> That's not practical because when, it's, not, it's not ethical, it's not practical. But if we start looking at the integration of where we've got fish production and we combine it with aquaculture, uh, aquaculture, the hydroponics, and the waste from here can go to chickens and rabbits, and the waste from here then can go to verticulture. It spills something, doesn't it? Sorry? Doesn't it spill something with those lettuces? Oh, yeah, I'll get to that later on. Oh, okay. And uh, it can be used as a waste for vermiculture or insect production, and then even the, the way from the insect production can be used for growing silviculture or for trees and others. So we can totally integrate these industries, evaluate, 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 evaluate. So we're going to look at Amiga fish products. I'm just going to pass this on. You can hand those out. This is a little flyer of our services, etc. But also, there's another one in there, a colour brochure, which is also uh, in regard to our other business, number one aquaponics, which is servicing the backyard sector. So, Mega Fish Products, it was developed uh, four years ago, and uh, in 2006 we started the construction of it after we found a, a bit of land to tenure. And uh, we're very lucky that people see the vision we were talking about, we're over tenure. Uh, two acres or one acre of land for a dollar for four years. So it's a peppercorn deal because if people see the vision of what we were talking about, expanding an industry which had a requirement of biosecurity, efficiencies and food production. In 2007, or around 2007, we had some issues with council and non-compliancy. And it was only because the, the town planners didn't understand 
the complexities of integrating industry cleaning and what, what would be the inputs, what were the outputs, what would be the risks associated with, with combining industry. Uh, they didn't look at the spin-offs as far as employment or food or all those other things. They just looked at the, the risk analysis of what would happen if they allowed this into, a, into an area such as where we set up, which was a rural three, which meant it, it went from intensive animal husbandry to animal husbandry to rural three. Would this be efficient to be allowed to be into, say, a township of Elizabeth or etc., and and not uh, be offensive in, in smell, in sight, as far as uh, uh, disanimity or uh, or any other other uh, issues that people have with uh, when construction is made? We got through that. We went through the arbitrary court, and we finally got through that. Uh, and the arbitrator was uh, very pleased with what he saw that we were trying to do. And so, with our commissioning, and in 2007 at the end, we commissioned stage one. 2008, 2009, we did the commercial phase. We've proven those technologies now. We've done the paper. It's available from DUA, Department of Education, Employment, Workplace Relations, on the industry as a whole and the recommendations for Australia. And uh, we closed OFP, I, I closed that account in the, the ABN about a month ago, so it no longer exists. So the material you've got is, is uh, old data, but it gives you an idea of what we're doing. So here's our research farm, Mega Fish Products, research farm in South Australia, over in, uh, up in Lewis in the Gawler uh, River region. We had four containers. This one was laboratory. We had a query in the, in the front section here. We had uh, laboratory work for microscopy work for uh, any uh, um, artificial insemination with the rabbits, etc. So we're working with those with those uh, animals. We had our fish production area, another fish production area, and a workshop and storage area. Over here, we then had our hydroponic facility. Now, we looked at two different industries, and this was our methodology of of, of the efficacies of these industries combining. We looked at this was the aquaculture industry, this was the hydroponic industry. We know that the hydroponic industry produces about 600 litres per hundred dollars worth of, of stocks or, or produce, so we knew that was okay. But we looked at the aquaculture industry, it's just fortuitous this light happens to have it here, but this line coming through here, this big wedge uh, of, of, we'll call it water, is really how much aquaculture can waste. If we look at recirculating aquaculture systems, if we're replacing 10% of water a day, it's a million litres in the system, we're replacing 100,000 litres of water a day, which is going to waste. Mm. It's just going out the system. So this is typical aquaculture outputs. A lot of water, which is neutrified. Hydroponics reticulated. So look at the system is saying to hydroponic people, listen, you guys, you spend a lot of money on fertiliser. A heck of a lot of money on fertiliser. These guys produce a lot of fish, but they also produce a lot of nutrient waste, which you guys can use. What are the differences in you using an organic fertiliser as compared to an inorganic fertiliser. And they said, oh, well, but we, we buy it in bulk and whatever. You know, it's, it's cost effective for us to buy it in bulk. Then we said, well, let's compare the price of fish food as compared to the price of fertiliser. Which one moves more? Well, the fish production or fish foods, which are made from pelletised uh, fish meal, the fish foods are fairly stable, whereas uh, fertilisers are based on hydrocarbon pricing. So as oil prices go up, so does fertiliser, and that's why they have to buy the bulk in fertiliser, which the, the, the companies love that sell oils in these products.